going to be reading from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 9, the call of Abram. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went, as the Lord told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife, Sarah, <laughs> to um, nephew, his nephew Lot and all the possessions they had commuted they had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for their land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moray at Shechem. Um, at that time, the Can Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar there for the Lord, who appeared to him. From there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord, and he called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward the Negrim. God wants for our hearts from St. Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 through 13, and then 18 to 26. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me. He told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, My daughter had just died. But come and put your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and went with him, and so did his disciple. Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus then and saw her, Take heart, daughter. He said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. When Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd and the people playing pipes, he said, Go away. The girl is not dead, but sleep. But they laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand, and she got up. News of this spread through all the region. The word of God to God's people, and let God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we are so. We are so grateful and happy to be here, knowing that you are here today. And we thank you for the people who are here, who are willing to 
open their hearts to feed their soul. Father God, your word is true. Your word gives us a guidelines for our lives. Your word is a light for us who are walking, especially in the dark. Father God, bless our heart and our ears when we receive the word. Have faith in your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, follow me. We call in a different ways. And the call that God directly to all of us. When Abram called by God, Abram took his wife Sarai and also his nephew Lot, not only them, but the family and also the possession they had. And both readings for this morning explain how God called us. The Psalms 33 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. And I want you to focus when God calling. Here is the Old Testament and the New Testament readings for this morning. Very clearly, both of them is a call from God to all of us. The call to Abraham was directed to him, but he included his wife, families, and the possession they had. And here's kind of a promise for that call. Because mostly of our call is hardly for us to have a promise why he call us. But we have to find out what is that promise? This promise is very clear. And this is how God told him and also his household. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. What is an amazing promise to all of us? If someone told me that, or just someone just called me and said, call to that place, I already built a palace for you. You have a car over there. You have a sport car over there. You have a vineyard over there. I will bless everything. Go. I guess everybody will say, I will go. For sure, I will go. But the faith that Abraham had motivated him to know the promises that God wanted him to have. And his focus is God alone. And God's focus is Abraham, his wife, the family, and also the possession they have. Because the Old Testament, the bigger the family and the possession they do, the, what, how many possessions they do have, is to signify to all of us or make all of us know that God bless you. It's a blessing. It's a blessing to have a bigger families. It is a blessing to have many possessions in a household because they believe whatever they receive 
it was from God. And we know that from what God has been told him. I will make you into a great nation. That's a blessing. And I will bless you. Bless everything, including this person, Abraham, by God. But in the New Testament for this morning, as Jesus walking along, he saw Matthew, and he saw a man, and his name is Matthew, sitting at the tax collector's foot, follow me. Matthew is a tax collector sitting in his office working over there. Jesus walking alone saw Matthew, called Matthew. Matthew stood up and followed Jesus. The tax collectors of that time is not the kind of people you can trust. They stole money from the people. If they receive a tax for meals, three dollars, two dollars for the Roman Empire, one dollar for his pocket. And I wonder why he sat down in his office, because that's where the power and authority he had. Because if you walk into the office, the boss always on his chair. Because he's the one who has the authority. He is the one who controls everything. Maybe he stood up when you walk in, when you walk into his office or her office and shake hands with you, but he returned back to his chair the best that he can have to let everyone know I have authority or I have power because this is my chair. And that's Matthew have that. Matthew always thinking about himself. Abraham is different. God bless him. And because of Abraham, it's a blessing for the others. Matthew is an individual person who control things in his life to have money from others, and that money is not supposed to have that, but he stole that money from them. He probably loved what he's doing. He might be saying, I am rich, I have a lot of money, I can buy whatever I want to buy, I can draw many people to me because then I have a money on my hand. Then Jesus walking through, and this is what he said, Matthew sitting in the tax collector's foot, follow me. He told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. Everything that Jesus, in this story, Jesus walking, Jesus saw him, he invited him to have a new hope in his life. He stood up, not only stood up, but he followed. Different from Abraham, get all the possession that he had and follow. Here it is a direct invitation individually to you, and I highly respect how Jesus is calling us. Calling us individually because we are all unique in many ways. I have a way to say yes to God when he called me. 
You have a way when God called you. And I do appreciate all of you who are here. Because when God is directly calling you, there is a yes in your life to be here to worship God. You know that there's many churches, or maybe all churches now, not many people worship on Sunday. They worship their own. But here is calling the person who owned a lot, including himself. He left everything that he loved. He left his own authority. He left his own power. But moving his direction in a new direction to receive the power and the grace and the mercy of God who calling him to go in a new direction of his life. Can you imagine when God is touching you and say, move from this to a, another direction I will give you? Because when God is calling us, you didn't see the possession or whatever in front of you, but he already prepared for you to have that. All you can do, go with the faith that you have in your life. Calling is a blessing to all of us, especially when God calls us. If God created the earth and all of us, if God holding the earth is spinning, what happened if he stopped it? Then everybody drove in nowhere. But sometimes we mistreated God, we are thinking that we are God, and the way we treat God is a second class in our life, but it's a reminder to all of us, when Jesus calls us, there is a promise already packaged up for you, and your name is over there. And every package call for us is more like in a warehouse. What happened if you return back to God and say, I didn't have your promise? You called me and promised to do, to have that I didn't have. He may be take you to the warehouse and say, look, there's your name still over there. You never opened up. You didn't have enough faith to follow me when I asked you to follow me. I want to move on from this. It's very important for us to see what is going on over here. When Jesus called Matthew, in Luke, there's Matthew prepare. Prepare the dinner. Which means if someone prepared the dinner, he spent all the money for that dinner. It's a banquet. Not only prepare for Jesus, but he invited all the tax collectors and many people in town to celebrate when Jesus changed his life. When Jesus called you, who rallied the dinner for you? The Father. When Jesus invited you to do something for him in his name, who prepared the food? Who prepared the dinner? Imagine the Father, the Creator, God of all gods, put up an apron and walking to the kitchen and prepare a dinner because of him. And Matthew did exactly what Jesus called him because for what Jesus calling him is more bitter, more, more better, more bigger, more promising than what he had now, even though the society respected him. Because everything in his life is about dishonesty. And once he recognized that dishonesty is not going to work for him, he changed his life when Jesus called from dishonesty to be honesty for his kingdom. So many times we are moving away 
So many died to make our own choice. But we never know when Jesus calls us, there's a new hope. There's a new life. There's a new way to all of us. And the Pharisees were there. The Pharisees say, why Jesus have dinner on the sinners? I'm glad to be a sinner. So that Jesus come and have dinner with me. Imagine if I'm a righteous and who is the righteous? There's nobody righteous. But because of the Pharisee, they were thinking about these people, tax collectors. And they call them sinner because they didn't keep the law. Because that is the balance of their life. If you keep the law, you might be a righteous person. But Jesus calling us in a new direction. He calls sinners to come to his kingdom. And he's using sinners. We are not called because we are perfect, but we are called because we are not perfect at all. Realizing ourselves is a sinner, knowing that someone will call us to be a perfect person because we are sinners. Then here it is what Jesus is saying for them. I really love it the way it is not the healthy who need a doctor but the sick. It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. That Jesus are willing to come to the sick people. Because this, every time we drop our tears from our eyes and lift up our eyes to God, there is someone over there for you. And here's the reason for that. Then Jesus, while he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her, and she will live. That's what he called us to do. That's why he is coming, because of that. And verse 11 also he said, verse, sorry, verse 13, For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Before that, Jesus said, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Mercy came from the word, means oil, anointed oil. Every household in a Jewish family have an anointed oil available for those they are sick in a house. We didn't use all of that. And that's why Jesus remind, remind, remind the Pharisee, I have desire mercy, not sacrifice. I want you to use the oil, mercy oil, inside the house instead of spending a lot of money for the cow and the sheep and the goat or dove and sacrifices in a temple. <coughs> when Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house, and saw the noisy crowd and the people playing pipe, he said, go away. You know why Jesus said, go away? It's not to celebrate for the life of the daughter of the synagogue leaders, but because they paid the people to cry for your mourn. They paid the people if I have a funeral in my family, I pay the people, they just come to cry. 
how messy the life they had. And Jesus called us. He needed us to know the right way and the right hope that we have. The only way that we can have that through Jesus Christ. And this is our hope. He will give us a new life, give us a new way to go. That's the only way to go to the Father. But we have to prove Jesus Christ. And then Jesus told him, you, you go away people. You are not coming here to cry because he have love for his family, but he's coming on my because they pay you to come and cry for that. And Jesus told them, the girl is not dead, but asleep. And the crowd, they were alive. Because Jesus always make a new way in our life. When you get dressed to come to church, there were people, some, there were some people, they laughed at you. When you holding your Bible and go, they will laugh at you. When you involved, in the mission of the church, outreach, they laugh at you. Whatever you do in the name of Jesus, there were people over there trying to stop you from doing that. But the Holy Spirit and God calling us already prepared the promise for you if you keep on going or following Jesus. The end of this month is to finish my two years over here in Christiana. The first thing I did over here is a hammer, nail, brass paint, and everything. That's the first thing I did over here. You know what I did first over here in my preaching over here? I am dying to be with you. I long to be with you. To have mission together, work together, and be together. And I must have a privilege to be preaching over here for three months. Faith that works in the difficult times. And after that, I preach about the mission I preach. I preach about the commitment. I preach about discipleship. Be ready. When we come to three years, everybody has to roll their streams. And we have to follow the person who carried the cross to all of us is our Redeemer. Let's find the promise had been prepared for this church. Hopefully the front yard will be finished soon and we go and fix other people, neighbors front yard. Not only the neighbors, we fix this town. We're going to find our way to follow Jesus if we have enough faith to move on. I'm so grateful for you and thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your gift and your talent is in this church. And I encourage you, please, my three years will be different. That Jesus trained his disciples for three years. And that three years, I want everybody over here to be a happy church. If you have difficulties, if you said anything, please don't bring over here. Bring your happiness over here. We need a happy, happy, happy family in Tracy First United Methodist Church. And let us pray. Loving God, we are so thankful for this morning. We thank you for calling us. We say yes to you. That's why we are here. We want to follow you, God. But help us, oh God. Give us a faith. Give us a strength. Give us a mind in the vision, missionary mind. And the eyes on you, oh God, everywhere you go, we will follow you. May your blessing upon all of us who are here. And for those that are not here, oh God, in Christ's name we pray. Amen.